Gwen, what are we going to talk about today? No, you said you were going to say it. Guys, Pat here, coming into Gwen's channel. Um, today we're going to be talking about why to take your easy days easy and probably easier than you're doing them already. And that's something that I really learned from cycling. I think Gwen does a great job in running. Um, but one thing that I see a ton of people get wrong. So buckle up. She's got a lot to say. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, bye-bye. Are you going to ask me questions? <laughs> Gwen, tell us where we're at. I am here in Park City, Utah, just getting in some high altitude training. Um, you know, we drove here with Pat and Stanley. We all drove together as a family. Um, and we're just trying to keep this year as similar as possible. And we know that we can get benefits from going up to altitude. So um, everything we do today, we know carries over into the years in the future. So um, we're up here um, just training still, doing social distancing and everything like that. But yeah, it's, I've never been here before. So um, this is the outside of my place. It's pretty awesome. I'm excited because we have a grill and a patio and I just can't wait for Pat to use the grill. Current altitude, roughly. What do you think, 81? Yeah, 81, 82. Got to look at the, the geo maps. Mm -hmm. um, I think the questions were mainly about, you know, what is an easy week, sorry, easy runs, like purpose of them, point of them. Tell us about your easy runs. Yeah, so usually throughout the week I meet, um, you know, like when we're not social distancing, I meet with um, my teammates every morning and we run together. And then in the afternoon, I almost always go solo whether we're social distancing or not. Um, and those afternoon runs are usually just as I feel. Um, you know, you still wanna, the easy runs are at a pace that you can talk, so conversational pace. And I just kind of listen to my body and some days are faster, some days they're slower. Um, you know, I'm not afraid to average above eight minute pace for an easy run. Um, but I also enjoy actually doing some Zwift runs. And so I've actually been leading when I'm back home in Portland, I lead a weekly Wednesday evening run on Zwift and it actually motivates me to go faster because it's like a social thing and I'm able to interact with people and that's pretty fun. So I'm really motivated by races like that's what I love that's what I crave that's what keeps me up and motivated every day and so you know during this time it could be a huge struggle um, to not be motivated but I think you know actually having my injury has allowed me to be super motivated during this time just being able to run and being healthy is really exciting I've seen improvements in my workouts which is really exciting for me um, I really want to get out there and race but you know I know that for me putting in the work now is only going to lead to a better athlete um, Gwen in the future and the years to come. So for me, um, you know, it's just looking at the future and knowing that this time period will end, races will come back. And um, I believe that I'm building a really strong, good quality right now that will carry over whether I get to race in a few months or if it's in a year. You know, I think sometimes people want to leave every run feeling like they accomplished a workout. I guess what's your mindset or your thoughts on if you do a run and it's just, you know, you're not like dripping in sweat afterwards, you know, what, what were you trying to achieve or what was the point of that? Easy runs for me, you know, it's a lot about just getting in the miles. So um, if you're not doing a ton of miles, you know, there's this debate of like quality and quantity. And um, I do think that form's always really important. So a lot of times on runs, you guys, it's weird. It almost looks like it's snowing right now. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but anyway, a lot of times on runs, I, you know, it's not about getting that really hard cardiovascular burn because if you make your easy days easy, you're able to go harder on your hard days. So I always say make your easy days easy and your hard days hard. And so those easy days are kind of prepping the body and letting you recover so that you can go faster and harder on those harder days. So, you know, on those easy days, um, something that you can do that I like to do is just focus on form and that um, I think that's what you can get out of it is working on that form um, so that can carry over into your faster days and make you a, a better athlete on those days. Gwen, has Jerry given any insight as to what to, you know, what to expect from training at this camp? I've kind of lost touch with him. I'm a little bumming. You're I'm, talking to him way more than me. I, you talk to him that's because he need, that's like cause he needs a bike from me. So he's, <laughs> he's like, uh, you know, I, when he needed something, he, well, he's like, when I, I'm the bike guy, he's got I think I found out I was going to altitude through Pat, through you. Because he needed a, yeah, I know. But anyway, um, you know, we found out very last minute that we were coming up here. Um, but 
it just says things starting to open up and um, everything. But anyway, yeah, so you know, when we come up to altitude, it's usually, you know, kind of get um, acclimated to getting at high altitude. It, it's really fatiguing. And so the first um, couple days or weeks, we just kind of um, just run basically as we feel. And um, then we'll probably start doing, incorporating some workouts. Um, and I think we're, we're only gonna stay up here for like 30 days, so not a super long stint for us. Um, then we're gonna go back down. So um, yeah, just get up here, get acclimated, and then hit some hard workouts, come down to sea level, and um, try to continue that fitness until we take a break. Okay, and then finally, I think if somebody was going up to altitude, like any age groupers or you know aspiring elites, what would be the you know the couple pieces of advice that you would give them before you know their training block or training camp stuff to think about yeah altitude it's it can be deceiving that first week so i think like even if you feel amazing don't push beyond what maybe your coach tells you or don't go beyond um just take the first like easy week i'd say pretty easy um stay hydrated that's a huge thing at altitude is staying hydrated um and you also burn more calories and a lot of times those first couple weeks at altitude while your body's adjusting um it's important to increase your carbs so those are kind of some things do you have any other advice pat we call it try not to get the fever right away and go too hard too quick like where yeah. you get you know people get so excited they're at camp mm -hmm. and you really kind of have to I even had a little bit of a fever yesterday on my mountain bike. I just wanted to hammer and keep going. But I was like, you know what? I got a long time up here. It's all about being consistent. Yep. Um, okay, fine. Sorry, one last question. It's just past one year since your your Haglund's surgery. Mm -hmm. um, give us just another report on that. Are you happy? You know, are you happy you went and had it done kind of reflecting back? I know it was like it took us, I mean, a really long time. I mean, there was a big period of time where you were like, no way I'm having surgery that's off the table you know and then you did so I think yeah, having, you know I think I was hesitant to having surgery because I thought there was a possibility that I'd never be able to come back to this elite level and I'm super happy I had it it took it definitely took longer um, than expected to get back to fitness but now that I'm there and I'm able to run without pain it's like crazy I mean we went for a walk yesterday with Stanley just here in Park City we went down some stairs and I just remember telling Pat like I can't I'm finally like seeing all these things like I can walk downstairs pain-free, full mobility, I don't need to open up my ankle. So, um, you know, I'm definitely happy that I had it done. It's crazy that it's been a year, a year seems super short, but it also seems super long at the same time. So, um, yeah. Would you tell people to find you in the DMs if they're struggling with some Haglund's questions as well? Sure. I, you've been a, I feel like you've been a really nice resource and you've referred a couple people to your surgeon and I feel, I. Yeah, I've had a couple people reach out. You know, it's hard. I don't. I'm definitely not an expert because every if people have Haglins, there's tons of different variables with bursas and is the tendon affected and how far is the bone and just so many different variables that I'm probably not the best person to give you exact advice, but I can tell you kind of the paths I took and maybe the sort of people to reach out to, this, the type of doctors or, or things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, Haglund's is actually really um, prevalent in the population. It just doesn't actually um, bother a lot of people. So anyway, good news. I'm healthy. Hopefully you guys are healthy too um, during this time. I think it's really important to still get out stay active so hopefully um this video gave you some motivation to get out there and go for a run